Many people come and ask me, why is it so important to tell stories? And the implication of their question is, is why does something that takes place way up in the clouds have anything to do with my life here in the material world? And in fact, modern society today uh, really discounts anything that really can't be justified in terms of production or usefulness uh, as something that is worthwhile doing. And they will say things like, shouldn't we be spending more of our time on things that are useful and improve our marketability? Things like math, or sciences, or reading informational texts. And then there are those who come to the rescue of storytelling and say, well, there are things that we do in life that are not simply, uh, you know, uh, for the marketplace or for some use, but we do them for the sake of the activity itself. Things like, well, you know, I go fishing or I might go to the movie or I might admire a beautiful uh, rainbow in the sky for its pure aesthetic quality to it. And it is true that storytelling has this intrinsic value, and it is fun and entertaining, but I'm, I fear that if we reduce storytelling to uh, a mere activity, a recreational type of activity, then we uh, don't have a lot of grounds to justify it as a major thrust of one of our activities. After all, isn't recreational activities to be done after the real work is completed? When we can spend our leisure time? And uh, storytelling, though, is something that I believe is essential. And it is actually something that justifies who we are as human beings. It distinguishes us from all other creatures on the earth. Now, let me uh, talk about, you know, what another question that some people may ask. And the question is, is, can I watch a movie or read a story um, in substitute of someone telling me one? Does it have the same quality value to it? And this uh, question, uh, obviously, if, it is important to ask. It's a good question. And certainly there is value in watching a movie. There's certainly value in reading a book. Those have their important place, just like any of the other useful activities we do, or productive activities, or leisurely activities. But they are different than what actually takes place in a story. And maybe if you can think of it like this, is if I witness a, a rainbow in the sky, how it just sort of appears there out of nowhere. And it's almost intangible to our physical senses, and yet it's there for us to witness and be a part of. How beautiful that is. Would you rather experience that or experience witnessing a photograph of it. Now photographs or paintings are obviously beautiful experiences in themselves, but they uh, are not the same as seeing a real rainbow in the sky. And that's really the difference here because there's a continu continuum of activities uh, or means that we can deliver a story but only one of them is the real experience, and that is having a real storyteller deliver the wind of their thoughts 
through the one tool we have to manifest those thoughts into reality through the rainbow speech. And a movie, on the other hand, is very tempting to want to view the story through pictures because it actually brings us into the story in a way that almost is like we're living it. It brings it down into the material world where it's accessible to our common senses, particularly sight. And so the, the, a movie experience is actually, even though it's, it's easier to understand a story, it is far removed from those clouds in the sky and it is actually not able to access the higher level thinking skills as you would if someone were actually verbally telling you the story. The next one activity that would be closer to this cloud in the sky is reading a story because there the characters on the page represent words. They're not words themselves. They're characters that represent pictures. And those pictures, when you read them, almost like hieroglyphics, pop up into the mind as little iconic images automatically. There's very little creative imagination going on. Um, it's more of like mathematics. It's just you, uh, you know what 2 plus 2 is without having to think about it. Uh, and the more you read, the more you have those kinds of ex automatic understanding of what you're reading. So, the other thing about reading is, is it takes this immaterial story that's up here in the clouds and they make it into something concrete. It's engraven into something. It makes it kind of immovable and permanent. It's not living anymore. It's not a living word. Um, and it, it almost makes it so it's not malleable. And when we tell a story in person, it's like that rainbow fading in and out. And it doesn't have a lot of permanence to it. It just comes and goes, comes into appearance and then disappears. And that is a much more living experience than what you have when you solidify the story into the permanent artifacts of our existence. And then the next move up toward that story is an auto um, version of the story. If you were to record the story like I'm doing here, it's very akin to the actual telling of one in person. But here again, even though you now can access your higher thinking skills because you have to uh, go back into the mind and imagine what I'm saying, you do still not are accessing, or it's still recording it in this permanence. It's an artifact now. You can go back and check it. And so, just like a movie, uh, it, you're not really utilizing your memory skills as much. It doesn't solidify into your memory because it, uh, as much as it would in person, because it's just a step removed from the real experience. And the... Uh, real experience requires a person to hold images in their mind for a sustained period of time. So finally we get to the actual storytelling experience, the living experience with someone actually telling us the story in person. I want to explain to you what's happening um, in a story by telling a story. A very short one. Um, it's a story of Odysseus. When he was returning from the Trojan War, he went to an island of the Phaeacians. And while he was there, the king ordered one of the poets to entertain Odysseus. 
Now the poet was was blind. And that's an important part of this story. Because the story that this poet tells Odysseus is a story that Odysseus is already familiar with. He lived through it. It was a story about him and Achilles when they were in a quarrel at one point. Well, while this blind poet told this story, Odysseus, who is very rational and rarely ever, well, has never wept before, broke down in tears. For the first time in Odysseus's life, he understood the meaning of the story that he witnessed and saw. Now that's an interesting story because it explains to us the purpose of storytelling, explains to us what's happening in the storytelling, how it moves beyond our common senses into a higher sort of state above that transcends the physical world. I, uh, let's go through this a little bit more. So here you have this, the blind poet. And in this story, the blind poet, who never saw actually what happened, he was blind. He was deprived of vision by the goddess of memory. But the goddess of memory blessed him with a much greater gift, the gift of poetry and song. He, when he witnessed, or he didn't see the story, but he experienced it, he began to call up memories within his own mind. And then, from those memories, envisioned with his spiritual eyes a narrative, a story. Not of the actual visual experience, but the way, the, the story as it really occurred. And that's an important distinction. Then he comes in to Odysseus, and Odysseus sits before him to be entertained, and he, this blind poet, begins to then take this narrative in his mind. It's not present. In fact, imagination is the tool one uses to be able to uh, see things that have yet to come into existence and also to be able to remember things that have, are no longer present with us. He envisions this story, and he begins to take that story, and then with the rainbow of words, paint a picture. Now, as the goddess of memory deprived the poet of vision, now the poet, to, instead of delivering the story through a medium of photography or pictures, he deprives Odysseus of his sight and only delivers the story through his words. It's through the sense of hearing that we transcend this lower senses and move into the higher realms of spirituality and where we can think on terms uh, of um, in knowledge and interpret language and meaning and be able to uh, understand who we are and who others are. And so now Odysseus only having hearing to witness the story, sees the story, not with his mortal eyes, but he sort of sees them with his ears. And this time, 
he has to go into his mind and he has to activate those memories. And he, the goddess of memory helps him um, conjure up those images. And then with his imagination, he's able to see the story and then envision a narrative of his own. And it's not probably exactly like this, the images that the poet has seen, but it's even more true for Odysseus himself. And then he discovers not just the factual elements of the story that he can check and verify, but he sees the meaning of the story, which is so much more important to his life. And we know that because he wept and it touched his heart. Uh, a man who is very rational and depended on his own eyesight more than anything else. So that is really, that story really teaches us a lot about storytelling and, the, and, and what is happening during a story when it's actually being told to our physical ears and not through our vision. We are able to access that higher thinking. Children, in fact, when they're told a story, uh, they get so absorbed in it that you know that they're actually losing their sensory awareness of their surroundings because they're going to a place that is more spiritual or invisible world. In fact, stories don't ever have to even represent anything in reality at all. But they can teach us so much more about the way things really are. So, storytelling transcends anything that's just merely fun, as engaging as storytelling is. It's not merely for recreational purposes it has some real value to it and in fact I would argue that without storytelling there would be very little motivation to do great works of art and um, because we would lose the meaning of the things and uh, that transpire around us and the and the actions that we participate in and with that lessening higher, uh, the lessening of our ability to think on a higher level in terms of judgment and so forth, we would lose our ability to make tools, things that will improve the efficiency of our production. And without that element of our being, we would be reduced to something like any of the other creatures on the earth. The, the thing that makes the world, our production, and our works so meaningful is storytelling. This is what makes us human beings. And so the I've created this channel on YouTube in hopes that I can share with you many different stories. Maybe you'll listen to them and hopefully you'll share them with others. Just subscribe. I don't know which side this is on, but subscribe to my channel and enjoy uh, being human. Thank you for listening.